Praise the Lord and uh, karibuni tena ni Jumapili ingine na penda kuwakaribisha. Mimi ni Bishop Maina Kukwa wa kanisa la uh, Beneza Grace International na kanisa letu limo katika jiji hilo letu na, 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 na lombi katika sehemu ya baraka uh, morem. Na tunapenda kuwakaribisha na hata kuwakaribisha kama wewe unapita na unapita siku ya Jumapili na ibada abiri kuanzia ta, saa tatu mpaka saa samba. Siku ya jumatatu, eh, juma jumaine, wenezide na arahamisi. Tunakuwa na ibada kuanzia saa kuminabiri. Tuapenda wagea ni karibuni. Siku ya jumatano, a special day, wakati tunakuwa na semkesha. Na tunapenda kunyosha mkono wa ukaribisho na wa ushirika mufike. Tuwe pamoja nanyi, tuzisikie neno lake mungu. Na tunashukuru Mungu maana ametuleta tena katika uh, uh, kipindi chetu the pastors corner ili tupate kuendelea na neno lake omba ufunike macho yako tuombe pamoja ili tupate kuendelea katika jina lake Kristo Yesu baba wetu wa mbinguni katika jina lake Yesu Kristo aliye bwana na mwokozi wetu twakushukuru kwa sababu ya kutozawandi na siku hii ya leo Asanti kwa sababu ya uzima na afya na asanti kwa yote ambayo bwana umetukirimia umetenda kwetu neema na fadhili zako Mungu zimetutosha na zimetuleta mpaka sasa wakati huu tumejumlika pamoja siku hii ya Jumapili jioni ili tusikie neno lako Mungu bwana na Mungu wetu twapenda kujiashiria mikononi mwako ili ukanene nasi wanao Tuajiashiria kwenye mikono yake roho mtakatifu ili akatusaidie kulisoma neno la Mungu kuliwaza na kulifikiria pamoja jioni hii ya leo ili isiwe tu kulisikia bali ikawe baraka na likawe na nafasi katika maisha yetu kututengeneza na kutusaidia kuishi maisha ya utaua kama yalivyo mapenzi yako kwa hivyo tu akushukuru Tualinua na kulibariki jina lako kwa sababu ya nafasi hii ya pekee kukaa pamoja na kulisikia neno lako katika jina lake Kristo Yesu tumeomba na kushukuru amen I want to welcome you once again this Sunday evening and uh, we have been doing the series titled Let the inside match the outside and uh, we have done a couple of series right now. And last Sunday, we touched on a very special uh, text, a very special area that we really need to go on from there, uh, from the book of Ephesians chapter number 4. And the first number 12, where Paul is speaking to the church. And he's talking about how Christ appointed men to be the apostles, the teachers, the pastors, the evangelists. And for the sake of equipping of the saints. And we want today to read first number 13 of the same chapter 4 of Ephesians. Chapter 4, first number 13. If you have your Bible open. Let's read together till we all come to the unity of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children. First number fourteen. Tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men, deceitfulness of men, in the cunning craftiness of deceitive plotting. Those other words of Paul to the church in the city of Ephesus. And we want to look into these words this evening and see how they apply to us 
as the church of Christ, we, the believers, we, the disciples of Christ, what implication do these words have over us? We have these stages of growth of a believer that is the gifted readers, and we mentioned this last Sunday. Those men who have the mandate as God's spokesmen, those who are the messenger carrier of God, not their own message, not their own philosophy, but they have hand from God, they have the message from God, and they take to the children of God, the church, the believers. And uh, we can see three stages of growth of a believer. And as we go through these stages, I want to you to have a time to evaluate your Christian walk, your life in the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. Number one, the mandate these gifted readers, men of God, have is to equip the saints. Equipping the saints, preparing the saint, giving them the resources the saint need to learn this life. Life, uh, race and live a Christian life that marks the life of Christ in them. That is the responsibility of these gifted readers. And Mark, I'm repeating myself and saying, not with their own doctrines, not with their own philosophies, not with any other teaching they could have collected here and there. But with the message from God through his word. Because God speaks to us through this word. We hear his mind, his voice telling us what to do, how to live through this word. And they bring that message in order for we, the believers, to be equipped, to be strengthened, to be resourceful, and know how we ought to learn, how we ought to live as Christians. We are living in a very critical moment that we need to live as Christians. There are so many cl a big cloud of witnesses who are watching you and watching me. They look at our lifestyle. They look the way we call ourselves, the way we react to situations, the way we behave, the way we learn and care for our families. At, in our place of work, in our place of work, I'm sorry, how we relate with other people. They are watching us and they know we profess Christ Jesus, this faith. So they are keen to watch our behaviors, our lifestyle. Are we reflecting the life of Christ? in our life and uh, the mandate now given to the these gifted men and women the apostles the teachers the pastors the evangelists is for the equipping of the saints we will collect collect doctrine the teachings of Christ 
and helping them to learn the race and be clouded in the word of God, bearing the fruits in every season. That is the mandate these gifted uh, readers are given. Number two of the stage of growth for the Christians is doing the work of ministry. Right from beginning, we see it by example. When Christ chose his disciples, he spent three years teaching them and equipping them for the mission ahead. He taught them, practically gave them examples, went with them into the field, sat together with them as he taught. He was sharing himself with his disciples. And he was also calling them apart in order to tell them the deep things he wanted to share with them. He took time to train them. He took time to equip them for the ministry and the mission ahead of them. Specifically, called, specifically equipped for the mission that was ahead of them. And the second stage of the growth of a believer, after we have been called and now being discipled by the gifted readers, is to do the work of the ministry. This work, this work has to go on. The propagating of this gospel has to go on. And who carry the mandate? Who carry the responsibility? Who carry on the ministry of our Lord Jesus? It is his desire. It is his command that we carry on with the gospel, propagating the good news to men and women who are still living in sins. And this is the mandate of the church. And the church is composed of believers. And the reason why they are equipped is to carry on their shoulders the work of ministry. Their time, their resources, and when they hear the call into the field to carry on with the ministry. But it is the mandate of every believer to carry on with the ministry. And this is why we train them. This is why we equip them so that this work, this ministry, we go on and on and tell them, that they need to sacrifice. They need to set apart their resources, their time for the work of ministry. Number three of the change of growth, and the one that I want to go on with, that this body of Christ is built up. These men and women, the saints, the believers, are built up, are well nurtured in the word of God. They are well grounded in the word of God. They know how to listen to the voice of God, not any other voice. They know how to differentiate in the many voices that we are hearing in this world. Because the world is very noisy. There are so many voices, but all those voices are not coming from God. And we really need to train and teach the believers how to differentiate the voice of God with the voices of men and the voices from our enemy. We really need to equip them, and that is the mandate given 
to the gifted readers. And we need to ask ourselves as believers, are we receiving the right doctrine? Are we receiving the right teaching? Am I being equipped? Am I being trained to handle the work of the ministry? Am I spiritually being nourished? Am I strong in my faith? Because there is a measure. Uh, our growth is measured by how we do the ministry and how we grow spiritually. Do we have the characteristics, the marks of Christ in us? Are we reflecting the Christ-like life in our normal day-to-day -day life? Those are the measures. And in verse number 14, this is what Paul said that after being perfected, after being well nurtured spiritually, well offended with the wonder of God, well fast with the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ, we reach to the measure, there is a goal, the stature of the fullness of Christ. We daily desire, and this is the prayer of the saints. This is the prayer of a man and a woman of God. That daily you are growing in your spiritual life. You are not a dwarf in your faith. You are not a child in your faith, but you are well offended. All the minnows, spiritually speaking, you need are given to you that you receive the right food, the right ingredients, the right type of food so that you may grow and not be more nourished spiritually, the right word that comes from God. That word will enable you to reach to the station, to the measure that God desires of his children. Everybody, every father, every mother who have children, they love to see their children glory. Nobody love to see their children more nourished and not growing year after year. Who would love to see their children like that? Remaining small, dwarfs. When other children in the neighborhood are growing, are praying in the field, and they are being sent to do some manual work, your children are dwarfs, are small, they are more, more nourished. Who would love to see their children like that? Even more, our Heavenly Father would desire to see any one of us more nourished, dwarfs in the things of faith. But His desire is to see well nourished men and women fanned, routed with the word of God, not lacking but well nourished in the things of faith. That is the prayer. That is the desire of our Heavenly Father. And verse number 14 says that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every weed of doctrine how you will be able to discern a long doctrine from the light collected doctrine 
is by being well nourished in the word of God. How you are well offended with the light doctrine from God. That's how you can be able to evaluate the word of God and what you are saying and put it on the measure what you are hearing and what the word of God is saying. And so it is Paul's desire for the church in Ephesus that the saints may grow and be crowded. Children are gullible, vulnerable, and they are mostly victimized in our society. And they are easily uh, diverted. They are easily taken away from their path of life. And uh, this is what can happen to the children of faith. If they are not well grounded in the true perfect doctrine of the gospel, the word of God is not rich in their life. Paul says, let the word of God be clouded in you, settled in you. We are no longer children when the word of God help us to grow and mature to the stature of fullness of Christ. And this is what believers need to know, that if we go in the word of God and let him, us make uh, uh, this our goal, that if we are growing, not hearing the same thing, every day, every month, every year, but every year you see you are growing spiritually. You are doing the work of the ministry. That way you can tell how much time are you sacrificing for the work of the ministry? How much time are you giving for the work of ministry? How much are you involved in the work of ministry? By that you can tell even without any other person telling you, you are growing spiritually. You are growing in the things of God. When you do this, how do you know you are growing? When you reach to other people with the gospel and you, you see the moral characteristics of Christ, you are loving other people, you are caring for other people, you are compassionate, you embrace everybody with the gospel of Jesus Christ. These are the marks of a growing Christian, of a believer. And this is how we can see and we can know this believer, this man of God, is maturing, is ripening, he is glowing in all the graces. And the graces that we are talking about is the love that was in Christ Jesus. We will have the word of healing. Let's take it to the men and women who need to be healed. The word of care, we care. Let's go and look to those who need to be cared, to be supported, to be encouraged. We care. Or you just wake up and you don't care about your neighbor, about your workmates, about your fellow Christians. Those are the graces that we need to grow in. And these graces, we cannot get to them from anybody else. We derive them from Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Every day, believers, we have to reach to glow. And we have our standard being Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Morally, we can see the standard set by him, as I said earlier. And as we mature, let's continue reflecting Christ-likeness in us. The standard is set for us. 
The Bible continue enlightening us on those standards, how to measure ourselves. And this way, we can have no double standards. We have one single standard, the standard is set by our Lord Jesus Christ. And as we walk on this path, then we are assured of our insight, what we profess, the word in us that is alive, will match the outside, our behaviors, our actions, how we color ourselves, our words that we are sharing with other people, the way we put them, the way we talk to other people, reflect the likeness of Christ in us. That is God's design for his children. That's God's desire for his children. And he wants us to grow. And we are no longer children to be carried by the knowledge of this world, by the deceitfulness of men, the trickery, craftiness of men of this world. Things that entice us and pull us, distract us from the walk of our faith into the wilderness. We are well nurtured. We are well fast. We know the word of God, what he says. We are ground and now in the word of God. We cannot be tossed by every doctrine that comes from east or from west. But we know how to measure that word through the word of God. We know how to evaluate it. We know how we can tell the difference. Is that the word of God or is a craftiness from man or his philosophy or his mind that he's trying to put in my mind? We are no longer children because the word of God is in us. We are no longer weak in faith, so we don't need to worry. Being strong in faith, walk stronger in faith, no matter the challenges that come our way, we know who is on our side. We know who is within us. We know who surround us. Who, we know who equip us, who uh, fight the battle for us. We know him. So we are no longer weak in faith, but strong in faith through the word of God that is in us. And we don't easily yield to temptations, any kind of temptation. We are strong and we can tell this is coming from the devil. This is coming from man. And you don't yield to those temptations. Your feet of faith are anchored in the word of God. You are a strong man and woman of God. And the one direct you because it is alive in you. So I am speaking to you. This is the way you can know yourself. This is the way you can see the moral excellence of your faith and the standards that Christ has set for us in your life. And you can tell where you are and where you are going through this world. We are no longer easily seduced. The world of this world, the glory of this world, easily seduces men and it distracts, pull them from the right path. And they are heavily involved in the things of this world. We said earlier, they are temporary. They are just for a time. Rest, rise up as children of God. Be able to tell this is the deceitfulness of the enemy, the devil. This is the calling away of the craftiness of men of this world. And we can stand on our ground. We believe us who are well anchored in the word of God. Let's share this word with the young believers. Let's help them to grow in the faith. Let's them help them to be strong in the faith, to be the mondo of those who are behind us. I want us to think on those words. Let us look into what Paul is saying to his son, Timothy. 
And these are the words I want to close our evening service and someone with tonight. Turn me with me to 2 Timothy chapter number 2 and verse 1, 2, and 7. You, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And we have already shared what are those graces. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Paul is talking to his son Timothy. Man born into faith through the gospel and of our Lord Jesus Christ and under the ministry of Paul. He taught him, nourished him in the things of God and Christ. And he is now telling him that he be strong in the grace. In other words, Continue in the same cloud. Continue in the same world. Continue on the same path that you have been walking, that has been marked by our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Because he is the one who marked our lane of race. He marked the boundaries. And when we go out, the, out of the boundary, his word speak to us and tell us we are running away from the rain. We are running away from the marked boundaries of our race. This word, because it speak, it will speak to you. And in verse number two, and the things that you have heard from me among witnesses, commit them to other believers. Commit them. This is a command of Paul to Timothy. Here, Paul is hoping that Timothy, his son in faith, would remember his example. Paul is finishing his race. He's nearing the end of his life on earth. And he wanted to alert Timothy and uh, make him to remember the rich things that he inculcated in his mind, the rich things that he taught him, that he be anchored in those things and not only hold them dear to himself, but also share them with other men and women of faith. He desired, he longed for uh, Timothy to be a mondo. And this is my finishing remarks. Our Christian walk, our Christian life should be a mondo, should be an example to be desired by other people outside Christ and even inside Christ, you are a mondo to another believer. You are a mondo, an example, a good man of faith, a good man of faith. The eyes who are looking at you, maybe your children, maybe your neighbors, the members of your, uh, of your church, they are looking at you. Are you a good mother to your children? Are you a good mother to the members of your family? Are you a good mother to your working mates? Are you a good mother to your village mates, your school mates? What kind of a Christian? What kind of a man of faith are you? What kind of a woman of faith are you? This was Paul's desire that Timothy 
be a mondo to other believers. He desired and he changed him that he may consider what he has received and the understanding of the ones and the things that Paul talked to him, gave him the things of Christ. And these things share with other people. Don't put them to yourself. Share them to other people. This is Paul's desire. And as we come to the close of our evening service, in our sermon teaching this evening, I want, you to, I want to leave you with this question. What kind of a mondo are you displaying to your children, if you have children, members of your family, your working mates, other believers, your neighbors, other Christians elsewhere? And if this is a question we all need to ask ourselves. What a man of a Christian are you? What a man of God are you? Are you a model? Are you an example to the upcoming men and women of faith? This is a key question. As we close this series today. Let the inside of you, what is inside of you? Is Christ inside of you? He's suddenly inside of you. Whatever is inside of you will be reflected by your action, by your behaviors. It will be seen by so many witnesses. But let your probation of this faith. Let this, the inside of you, reflect or match the outside of you. This is Paul's final word to Timothy. And I want to leave you with this challenge that Paul Give to Timothy his son. What kind of a mondo are you living? And what an example other people allowed you are seeing you. We are called to be the children of God and our life to reflect so. I want to pray with you as I close. And I want to ask God's blessing into your life. And I want to ask you the help of the Holy Spirit who help us to walk the walk, who help us to tap the riches of the Word of God, who counts us when we are walking outside the lane outside the boundary set by the word of God. He helped us to see our faults, our limitations. And I want to pray that this power and the Holy Spirit may be with you and guide you. Father, we thank you for all the reasoners. We thank you for those men and women who had the opportunity to reason to this word this evening and I'm praying for them all that through this word the effective powerful transforming word that has eternal life sustained life may speak to them in the name of Jesus and that they may experience the power in and the effectiveness of the word of God in their life. Father, I pray that this word will change these men and women who they are. 
their conduct, the way they carry themselves, their behaviors, are they good models? It will speak to them and help them through the power of the Holy Spirit to see themselves where they are running the race. Are they outside the mighty reins or they are following the rules of the king? Father, help them and equip them with the light word. Give them the light men who will nourish them with the real word of God, the nourished word of God that will equip them and strengthen them, mature them, be strong, be fruitful in their faith, in their life of faith. So we thank you, Father, for this evening. And we thank you for all the listeners and viewers. And we thank you for the opportunity for sharing your wand with your people. We bless you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, Jina langu ni Bishop Maina Kogwa, mchungaji wa kanisa la Ebenezer Grace International. Kanisa letu lipo Baraka pande huwa Morem katika jiji letu la Nairobi. Na tunapenda wageni. Kwa hivyo Jumapili ukipata nafasi tunakukaribisha uwe pamoja nasi. Na kama unapita katikati ya wiki, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Tuwapenda wageni na tunawakaribisha katika ibada zetu kuansia saa kumi na biri. Jimulika pamoja na waminio wengine na mungu atakubariki. Nasema kwa kwa shalom, shalom. God's blessing upon your life in the coming week. Shalom, shalom. Amen.